So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wise? You want to know what this Bible says? Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you got to know that there's punishments and judgment for not keeping God's commandments. If you know that about God, guess what you're going to do? You're going to move different. If you know that there's punishments for stepping outside of what you're not supposed to do or what you're supposed to do, you're going to move different. So sister, for instance, you ever got a whooping before? You know what your mom or your dad expects of you, right? You know what it took to get a whooping and what it took not to get a whooping, right? So you, for the most part, tried to do everything to not get a whooping, right? That was fear for your parents. You had the fear of being corrected. Just like us. Read them one more time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's wisdom. Having that fear of the Lord, knowing that there's something I must know, something that I must do, that's wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So in order to understand the Bible, because I know you never understood the Bible, because you understood that um, the lie was told for Christ being uh, white, you understood that. Why? Because you didn't keep the commandments. She didn't get taught right. She didn't have the commandments. She was not taught the commandments. It said the good understanding has all day. Okay. Why? Why? Because that's what was readily available, right? This understanding was not in the earth readily available. It's only to the elect. It's only to a select few that this knowledge is going to be revealed to. Right now, you've been chosen. You understand that? You've been chosen to hear this truth, sister. Read that again. You've been chosen to hear this truth. I want you to listen to this one more time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do you love the Lord? Come here for one second. That's uh, 29 and 13, Isaiah 29 and 13. That's, that's good, but I want, I want to know if you really love the Lord. Do you want an understanding of what he wants from you? You know the Lord's not a genie. You know you can't just stand in your, in your closet and pray or go to church and pray and he's going to grant all your wishes. You got to do something. 29 what? 13. You got to do something. Yeah. Listen at this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. Read. Wherefore the Lord saith, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth, our people draw to the Lord with their mouth. Lord, I love you. God, I believe in you. I got faith in Jesus. I'm washing the blood of Jesus. These are all the things that our people say out of their mouth. But what? And with their lips do honor me. I praise God. I love God. They honor them with their lips. Read. But have removed their heart far from me. Remove their heart, their mind. The heart is the mind, sister. Our mind is removed from the Lord. We don't understand what the Lord wants from us. We don't even understand that there's a dress code that our Father has for us. Do you understand that there's a dress code? A, a, a way to eat? You understand that? A way to entreat our sisters. There's a code for everything to do in this earth, but we don't know how to do it because it has been taught by lies of men. The same man that taught us Christ was white taught us that we don't have to keep the commandments anymore. They taught us to just believe in word and not in deed. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, you hear that? From the heart of men, proceed, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Can this think? Can your heart think? So the heart of men has evil thoughts. Our thoughts have been removed from the Lord. Go back to Isaiah 29. Our heart is removed. Why? Let's read. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Read. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. Uh -huh. So we come to the Lord. We understand that we suppose to serve, serve a God. But we don't know how. Read. And with their lips do out of me. Read. But have removed their heart far from me. Meaning we don't know how to serve them. We don't understand Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Wait, really? Finish Right, finish that then go do the running. And their fear towards me Read. is taught by the precept of men. We believe that we could continue on in sin, continue on sleeping around from man to man or sleeping around from woman to woman. We believe we could continue doing drugs. We believe we could continue selling drugs, fighting, stealing, setting folks up for murder, fraud. We believe we could do all these things and still come to the Lord at the end of the day like he's going to answer our prayers when he is not. Bring it out. He's telling us there's a certain way that you 
what you want in order for me to have your back. Right now the Lord ain't got our back as a people. He got us killing each other as a people. Give me that in Sirach 39 and verse 28. Go ahead, sister. That's another thing that you shouldn't be doing on the Sabbath. Today is a holy day. Going to the store on Saturday, the Lord's Sabbath day. You understand that? Give me that Nehemiah. We are not supposed to be out here buying and selling on the Lord's holy day. This day is holy unto the Lord. Anybody who's going into a store right now, you stop. You stop. You want me to go in there and steal it? You do not go in there and steal it. You go in hell and keep the Lord's day holy. You listen to the word of God. You do that which is holy unto the Lord. Read that the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. Listen, sis. And the people of the land bring wear and victuals on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath. Which, what is the Sabbath day? What's the Sabbath? It's the seventh day of the week. Right? Look at your calendar. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Go all the way to the end, which is the seventh day. That's the Sabbath day. What should you not do on that day? That we were not buying of them. So if anybody have goods to sell, we ain't buying it. On the Sabbath on day. On the Lord's Sabbath day. Or on the holy day. Or on the holy days, because we got high holy days. We got new moons. We got the Passover. These feast days, that's the uh, uh, ordained of the Lord. We can't buy and sell on those days. We put that stuff on hold. We got six days of the week to go do everything we need to do. But on the seventh day, you give it to the Lord. That's keeping this day holy. I give it to the Lord. Who says Sunday is the, the uh, holy day? Hey, hey, sis, who says Sunday the holy day? What did the Bible just say? Give me on um, the uh, Sabbath day and Deuteronomy, Exodus 20. But see, it's too late to preach that now. Because it's not too late to preach that. We standing here, we still breathing. It ain't too late to preach that. Say what you gonna say, buddy. No, no, it's not. Guess what? You think you think you just stood right here at a spur of the moment? Yeah, I was shopping on the Sabbath too. I used to do that too. And then guess what I did? I stopped. You need something today. You ain't gonna go to the store. Nah, I go yesterday. I prepare. You want that? Give me that in Exodus. Listen, sis. Just listen. Just listen. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. All right. I got sis. You don't want the Lord to punish you. You supposed to have a healthy fear in him, period. No, you don't, sis. If, if we tell you that this is what the law says, read The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why does he have to tell us to remember it? Because there's going to be a common time through the course of years and our disobedience to him that we will forget. We was taught lies on how to worship him. this world we living in. Yeah, I see this world we living in. You see this world we living in? It's a new world. It's this is the same world he talked about. That was gonna occur in this point in time. So you don't have coronavirus. Who's gonna have all that? Give me that Deuteronomy 28. Who's gonna have it all? This a whole new you know why? Because we are disobedient to the Lord. We are disobedient to the Lord. And we constantly want to go by what man told us versus what the Lord prescribed for us. Bring it out. 28, is that 59? Uh, they yes. our parents a little bit. We teaching now. We teaching now. So there's no excuse for our people, right? Listen. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 59. Listen. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Listen, remember in the book of Deuteronomy 28, it talks about curses. He said, now, one of these curses is, we're going to have plagues. Read. And the plagues of thy seed, even the great plagues, and of a long continuance, and sore sickness, and of a long continuance. Now, this is going into, like, STDs, uh, diseases that you could pass on from one generation to the next. Right. That's going to occur because of what? There's people out here sleeping around, thinking they met somebody that, they, that was faithful to them, and guess what? They messed around and cheated on them. Or they already had that package before they met you. You know, a woman is only supposed to be with one man her whole life, but that's not taught today. What's taught is opposite of the laws of God. We're trying to teach the laws of God. It's never too late to start. If the Lord haven't come back and put forth the destruction on this earth like he said he's going to put forth, it's never too late. You always got time to get right, sister. That's true. I never said that it's never too late. You said we was living in a new world, so it's too late to it teach that. It's a new world. It's not the world I grew up in. We got to get adjusted to this stuff. Right. You're right. We got to get adjusted to this. We got to get adjusted to this. I mean, stuff that's running around. You're right, sis. We got to get adjusted, to this. Gotta get adjusted to this. Now is the time. Guess, hey, get, listen, come here. Guess what the Lord did for us? He gave us a time where everything shut down. He slowed everything down to do what? To give you time to sit down and 
at home and come across the prophets and really understand what the Lord expects of you. A lot of people couldn't go to work. So what you doing? You got time to click on the computer and see what the Lord says. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.